Empire of Sin could have been fantastic, but unfortunately is let down by a bunch of features put into the game without anyone seemingly trying them out to make sure they were fun. Hi folks, it's Mark here again bringing you my review of Empire of Sin, and if you find the video useful then don't forget to subscribe. Now Empire of Sin is set in the 1920s Prohibition era USA. You get to play as one of the famous mob bosses, and of course the idea is to take over the city through opening illegal rackets, breweries, brothels, speakeasies, hotels, casinos, and of course, meeting out extreme violence to all your mob rivals. Because while you're trying to build up your business empire, they of course are trying to do the same. You'll have to deal with the changing tastes of your fickle customers, watch out for police raids, and of course defend your businesses from rival gangs. Any time a fight does kick off, the game instantly turns into a turn-based tactical combat mode, with you controlling either your hard case hired hoodlums, or just a bunch of inept stooges that you might have hired to guard your businesses. And whilst I absolutely love the concept of running a mob empire, building up the businesses and getting down and dirty on the street with the combat when it all kicks off, unfortunately the game just did not deliver for me, which we'll get into more later on. But first up, the graphics and sound. You'll notice from the video that the graphics are kind of low-key. They're certainly not going to be winning any sort of award for anything special here. They do, however, do a pretty good job of portraying a dark and dingy gangster-run city in the 1920s. And I do think they fit the mood of the game quite well. The lighting changes depending on whether you're out on the street, under a street lamp, or inside one of the businesses. And also the lighting colour changes to match the theme, whether you're in a speakeasy, a brewery, or a brothel. So overall, the graphics do fit the mood of the game, but they don't look anything special. And leading into sounds, I also noticed that the lip sync doesn't match up in any way, shape or form during the cutscenes when we're listening to the voiceover. This isn't a great deal breaker though, because, well, there just isn't enough of the voiceover. The cutscenes are voiced and one or two other bits in the game, but the vast majority of the dialogue and missions and stuff that you do, yeah, they're not voiced. Which is a shame, because whilst the voice acting does generally sound pretty good, and I like the gangster voices and mob voices that they've put in, uh, there isn't enough of it. I just wanted to see how you were doing, Father. Anything I can do to help the church? And also, I'm not too sure about the writing, because some phrases are overused from some characters, and it sounds a little bit like it's just been overscripted and not thought about how the particular lines fit together one after another. Of course, my son. Can you do this? For the church, my son? Hmm. I suppose it will, my son. God is with you on this journey, my son. Which is a similar flaw I actually found in the game concepts and mechanics, too. Okay, then on to my likes and dislikes about Empire of Sin. Starting with the good stuff, right at the beginning of the game, you've got a good selection of mobsters to choose from as your gang boss. I mean, it's not going to make a huge difference who you pick, but they do have individual traits and maybe bonuses to certain businesses. Some might give you more income from a speakeasy, some might give you more income from a casino, and they all have some special combat move which is unique to that boss. The starting missions, as you play as each one, also vary a little bit. And it's a little bit of story, but it's not going to make a huge difference to the game. But it's always nice to see some variety here because it does encourage replayability. And this carries over into the next thing I liked about the game, the choice of gangsters that you can hire to be part of your empire. Now, I'm not talking about the standard mooks that you're going to have guarding brothels and breweries, but I mean the elite gangsters that you can recruit. These are going to be your hit men and hit women that you're going to go around attacking other businesses with. They vary in quality and, of course, upkeep and wages, which you'll have to manage. And the more expensive ones you probably won't meet until later on into the game. And they might come with special weapons or even just really legendary weapons and better abilities. But they're going to cost you more as well. You can equip whatever weapons you want, depending on the class that they are, like a doctor or a tank. And you can personalize them further with the perks that you can unlock for each gangster, if you keep them alive, because if you get them killed on a mission, that's it, they're gone. But the perks are nice in that you can personalize your gangster to fit the role you see for them. However, I don't like the way that they're unlocked. You see, there's, I think, about five perks for each one. You get a selection and on tiers of which perk you want to choose, but it's unlocked just by spending a certain amount of time waiting for it to tick over, and it's done. I would have much rather seen these perks unlocked by earning combat XP or taking part in battles, 
because that would make more sense, right? You get these special abilities through getting the hang of or learning how to kick in doors and shoot people in the face, rather than just sitting in the safe house reading a paper and all of a sudden you're a top-level gangster and know how to do all sorts of things. Yeah, I, I think there's a trick being missed there, but anyway, that's the way it works and the perks are pretty good. Other than that, I do quite like the look and feel of the game through the little details. The clothing, the outfits, the weapons and the names, the buildings, the streetcars, things like that. Whilst none of them are graphically amazing, they do make you feel like you're in Chicago in the 1920s or somewhere else in the US. And it does help fit the theme. And the only other really great thing I can say about the game is that it's currently available on Game Pass, which is where I played it. So if you're not sure you want to shell out for this game, you can play it if you've got a Game Pass. And that's how I'd recommend you try this game out, because I actually don't like the game that much, and I'm going to tell you why now. One of the first major things I found to be a problem with this game was that there are still some bugs in it, and hopefully these are going to get patched out. But I had to actually restart a couple of times due to big problems with the story missions. One of the characters I had to go and talk to went into a building, which presumably I was supposed to follow in, and I couldn't enter that building. I just couldn't go in at, at all. And that was basically the end of that campaign, and it was back to the start and start again. So I don't know when these are going to get fixed. That is the problem, and they do interrupt the gameplay. The rest of the fighting and stuff, I, I didn't find too many bugs or major issues with that, but when it's a major storyline mission and you've spent a few hours into a campaign and have to start all over again just because you can't do what the game is telling you to, that's really annoying. Other than that, my main issue with the game was the various mechanics and the way they're implemented, particularly on the business running side of things. It feels like lots of different people have been working on their own aspect of developing the game, and it's been put together without people really testing to see if it works, if it flows. For example, the menu system. I found to be absolutely awful in this. Quite often I was looking for a way to get to one of my businesses. Well, it's not clear for a start, and it's awkward at best. For example, there is a list of businesses in any particular section of the city, but it lists all the businesses you know, not just your own, but all the ones owned by other gangsters that you've discovered and found. So you can sort by alphabetical order, which might put yours down in the middle of the list somewhere, so you scroll down and you try and find the business that you want. And just examples like that, and the alcohol buying screen, where you change what you produce and make in the breweries and what you sell in the speakeasies, it was just a pain to get from one to the other. It just wasn't clear, and it didn't flow together at all. And another thing, on that note, the drink production and distribution is absolutely ridiculous, I think, because every so many game turns or game hours, you get a message saying, oh, the people of this district have changed their tastes. They don't like the alcohol you're serving, and they want to be served this type instead. But well, you don't just press a button, or you don't just serve two types of alcohol. You have to go into your individual breweries, and you have to tell it to change the type of alcohol it's making, assuming you've upgraded it enough to produce the type of alcohol that's required. Then you have to go to the screen, a separate screen through a separate menu, to find the type of alcohol you're serving in all your hotels and casinos and speakeasies, and you have to click the button, and it only goes forwards, it doesn't go backwards, so you have to click the button several times to cycle through all the different types of drink to get to the one that the people want for that month but that only lasts for about a month in game time, which goes through fairly quickly. And then they want to go back to the old style again, so you have to go back through all these damn menus and screens and click it all back. I don't think anyone ever tested this to see if this was a fun idea. And then you have to go through this bloody rigmarole of changing what's in production and what's been delivered and served, otherwise you don't make any money. And that flashes up so damn often, it's absolute pain in the ass and is no fun whatsoever. So messing about in countless menus and getting lost in them, it, it kind of spoils the business management side of the game. The combat side of the game, I don't have so many issues with, but I will say that turn-based tactical squad combat has been done so much better in many other games, particularly ones that are based purely around it, like Gears Tactics or the XCOM games. This doesn't bring anything new, as far as I can tell, to this turn-based tactical side of the game. And there's some issues in it which just haven't really been well thought out. Like each of your gangsters has two action points to spend in a game. You can move and you can shoot and some combat actions take up both action points. All that is fine. If you shoot, however, it ends your turn instantly, even if it's only a one action point 
combat attack. You can't shoot and then move. You can't shoot from a position of cover and then retreat round the corner or something. No, but you can move round the corner and then shoot. You just can't do it the other way around. There's various perks that are supposed to be... a well, it's supposed to allow you to do this, and I did unlock a couple on some of my gangsters that said, mate, you can do a full move after shooting and things, but I didn't get them to work, and I didn't get them all to trigger. I couldn't select them sometimes, so it just doesn't really feel that well implemented. The other issue with the combat is that the maps are reused over and over again. So if you have a fight in a brothel or a fight in a brewery, you're going to be looking at more or less the same maps over and over and there's not enough variation out on the street it's a little bit different but it does feel artificially cut off where the street stops and starts you have your little area that you can have the fight in and when i said you'll see a lot of these maps repeated it's not just when you go raiding when you go raiding you take your dream team of elite gangsters and that's good fun but so many of the fights are when you're defending against another gang that's declared war on you and they're coming to attack one of your businesses and you've recruited some basic stooges to defend those places. Well, those stooges are actually pretty decent. They come with their own guns and they develop their own perks as well, which is kind of fun. But the trouble is you get to play these battles out far too often. There are lots of businesses on a map. You, you might have 20 businesses at one stage. And when the enemy start attacking you, well, you're gonna go from defending one to another, to another, to another, to another, before you get to do anything with your dream team and attack them back. And the trouble is all these fights all feel the same, all completely repetitive, all really boring, all on the same type of maps okay. and locations. They have added an auto-resolve feature, which is nice if you really don't feel like you can play through the battles anymore. But the trouble is, this doesn't feel terribly well balanced, and sometimes the auto-resolve gave me a victory when it should have given me a clear defeat when I was hugely outnumbered, and sometimes my guys got their asses kicked when it looked like I was going to easily win and the odds were in my favour. feels very random does at least take away the monotony of having to do those fights, but then you play this big risk, and are you going to lose the business? Is it going to get shut down? Is it going to get trashed? Well, oh, maybe I should just play the fight normally and just make sure I win. And that takes away a lot of the fun from the combat. If anyone saw my review of Troy Total War Saga, or whatever it was called, one of my major griefs was that you would fight millions of these tiny little siege battles where the enemy army would come and trash one of your villages and you'd fight with a crappy little auto garrison that was generated and it went on and on and on well it's the same here unfortunately it makes the combat a lot less fun the big battles the proper battles where you've got your elite gangsters with all their abilities and tooled weapons they're better but all these little defense battles are boring as hell so having been very disappointed with the business management side of the game and getting kind of bored with the combat side of the game that leaves two issues still that i had a problem with and these are niggles really but the black market in the game is this system where you can go and you can buy equipment for your gangsters like uh, first aid kit better weapons better armor melee weapons which should be good right you think a thriving gangster economy there's going to be a great black market for stuff no it's it's absolutely terrible it has such a limited supply of of anything and not a great selection and this stock changes I think every month or so so you have to come back and wait and see if there's a, the type of weapon you want or, or the type of armor that you want and it's really disappointing and it costs a fortune it's far more effective just to go raiding rival gangs businesses or even the generic businesses that are owned by just random thugs because you're going to get better loot out of there and it costs you nothing you might even make money on the raid and the other thing that really annoyed me is the map if you zoom out of the map too far you can see the entire city and all the different blocks and districts. But when you zoom out to maximum mode, it rotates the map to completely different orientation to what you were just looking at. And if you weren't paying attention to the name of the city block you're in, you don't know which one you came from. You can't find your way back. And I found that really frustrating at the start of the game. I mean, why it needs to change the rotation and the aspect of the map when you zoom out, I don't know. But that, that seemed um, just awful to me. So overall, Empire of Sin is a fantastic idea with some bits that are good and make me want to try and play, but the bad bits are just too frustrating and too disappointing for me to want to overcome them and get on with the rest of the game. It's something that could be great if these issues were fixed and addressed, and I would love to see the developers actually patch some changes in to make the game just flow better and play better. I would come back and definitely try it again if some of these issues get fixed. As it is, though, I would just rate it a 5 out of 10. 
10 because I, I really don't want to go and play. Anyway, those are my thoughts. Give us a like if you agree and a dislike if you disagree. And let me know why in the comments down below.